there's so much to do There's hula, there's surfing and real estate too We're just two local guys with so much to say So listen to the Real Estate Brothers today Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the Real Estate Brothers episode 26, uh, April 20, 2020 edition. Um, we have a lot of great information for you folks, as always. Um, uh, hope you guys know too, if you, if you can't catch us, we're also, we also have a podcast, yeah? So we're on Stitcher, iTunes. Um, but yeah, I, I know Lane, you have a lot of stuff for us to talk about and I... I I'm going to try to come at it from a little bit of a warm and su- fuzzy. I know you have a lot of um, hard data. so I think we do need a little warm and fuzzy, right? I mean, with the yeah, in these times. times. Exactly, exactly. Yep, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to talk a little bit about Zoom. Um, I think a lot of people got a probably a quick crash course in that in the last few weeks. Um, talk about some interest rates. I know a lot of people have been having questions about why the, the rate's going up versus um, the Fed rate going down. Uh, I have some strategies that I've been trying to use to keep myself sane and get ahead. And always, um, also I have a quote to end my portion. A Stanford economist has some wise words that I wanted to share with you guys. And then we'll jump into Lane's half, yeah. So I think you guys know me. I'm a... A uh, real estate investor, been involved in about uh, eight different states, uh, all different types of investments, turnkey, wholesale, short sale, foreclosure. And I'm also a full-time real estate agent, um, investor friendly. So um, let's jump right into it. We're going to stay away from some stats today, but I wanted to talk about hot off the presses today. Um, about 1.50, our uh, Honolulu mayor came on the news and announced um, that he would wants residents to wear cloth masks in public. Uh, th- these these aren't these aren't the N95 or the medical masks. He wants us to wear um, homemade masks, I guess, because that will be taking the um, using the inventory from our healthcare providers. So, to some of you folks, I mean, this could be a could be a side hustle, right? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, DIY stuff online now. Um, on how to to make these masks, and you can a lot of people are making real fancy ones and uh, stylish ones. So, if you're looking for a side hustle, yeah, maybe that's something to look into. Yeah. <laughs> I told him I wanted the one, the Chinese protest one. <laughs> one I wanted. Which one is that? With the yeah, because so when this all came out, right, the Chinese media was trying to censor everything. So there was okay. like guys that would walk have this. Um, we will not be shut up or something on their their mass. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the one with the, the Chinese, the one that was standing in front of the tank. This is back in the, what is that? Oh, oh similar, similar <laughs> revolt. <laughs> so yeah, that's just wanted to pop that. In. I added that right in the last minute, but what I wanted to actually jump into first was again, I was talking about zoom, right? So I think that's been the hot topic for everyone. Everyone's probably been using it a lot. Uh, my son has been using it for his drum lessons from, from his instructor, my daughter for piano, even hip hop. Um, I know a lot of people, including myself, I'm having um, drinks with my friends on uh, Zoom, you know, and uh, it's kind of fun. And it, it's being, um, it's being, we're staying at home and safe. And then, of course, I know everyone is, has a lot of training, has a lot of masterminds, a lot of meetings, corporate meetings and things. So a lot of people are using Zoom. And uh, with that said, um, going to I the next like slide. I feel like you left corporate America too early. Now everybody's going to learn that we don't need all these silly meetings anymore. Right, right, right. But uh, thanks to uh, Larry of Honolulu, he, as a contributor, he um, sent me some content today. And he said, yeah, why don't you talk about Zoom bombing? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea. So, um, yeah, with with that, the, the, the surgence of Zoom has come these um, Zoom bombings or these hackers that are jumping into um, these chat rooms or these conference calls and doing anything from posting pornographic things or, you know, putting um, anti-Semitic, whatever's on their agenda. So, um 
you know, we have hackers now in, in this this uh, area. So I wanted to talk about a few things. Again, thanks to Larry. He sent me some information, but um, we have on the next slide talks about a few and, things. And don't right? use uh, your company's uh, login to do your drinking parties on the weekend. Oh, that's a, that's a very <laughs> good disclaimer. But a few tips that um, that are going out, and I'm sure, you know, this is something that's going to be even more um, – run of the mill in the next few weeks or few days is how to prevent this now that it's a big thing. But a few small things first and foremost is protect your PMI, which is your personal meeting ID. So that's uh, something unique to you. I mean, it's like your login or password. Um, another thing you can do is um, require meeting passwords when you're, this is all when you're scheduling your meetings. Yeah. So yeah, don't share that PMI and don't um, send it out and post it on social media or public areas because that's what uh, one one area that they've been tracking or been the hackers have been able to crack in on. Um, also, um, we have other information here. So we can, in, these are also in settings, yeah? So you can control who you can share screen share with, right? So um, you can say host only or, or participants. Um, also, who can start sharing when someone is sharing. Um, you also can put, uh, attendees on hold and that allows you to uh, actually kick them out of the meeting if if they're causing trouble um waiting room i think you use a waiting room Elaine. Yeah, as we didn't pop in or i'm not too sure but this this when we, we do these calls we don't have the meeting room so people can oh. see us talking in the beginning, oh, okay okay so. Ooh, i better watch what we say then yeah <laughs> but that's another option so these settings if you see if you go into the zoom um, settings. There's actually a whole bunch, way more than this, um, and um, I think everyone is going to be, become, if they're not now, a lot more familiar with these settings because if I think they, I don't know if they added them on recently or what, but there there are a lot of settings um, for privacy, and so yeah, I, I've been using this thing for like two, three years now, and there are a lot of settings, and it keeps yeah. getting more and more. <laughs> it's and a, I think it's a overwhelming for the new guy. Yeah, and and. And I think it's it's more of a risk for the when you're having you know really large um, meetings and you're sending it out like posting it and giving it to a whole a whole lot of people right because then it's out there and it, and that's when it's at risk yeah because then it's no longer as as private right so then you need to restrict things so maybe for smaller meetings it's not as uh, essential for these things but might as well get get used to them now because I I think. Uh, you know these these kind of Zoom meetings are going to be become more the norm more than anything else. Yeah, a couple of quick tips that I use is like whenever I'm not talking here, like I just press my mute button, mm. and then um, when you use the Zoom chat and you're kind of talking to somebody, make sure you you you're, you're being cognizant if you're doing all panelists or just one person, or uh, maybe if you're if you're one of those trash talkers, just text the person. Just yeah. maybe it might be safer. And that's good etiquette too, right? Because you don't want to be, it's almost like when you're on the walkie-talkie to CBs when you're stomping on somebody else. So that's a good point. So yeah, Lane, I know, I think you had this question. I've been getting this question too. And I think we've addressed it in the in past um, meetups and, and discussions, but you know, everyone's asking, or some people are asking, why have interest rates increased when the Fed rate, rate went down, right? So um, the, there are a few reasons. The main reason, well, I have three here. So the first one is that uh, the Fed rate is not, there. Uh, we mentioned that before, right? the Fed rate is not directly related to a 30-year amortized loan. So it's actually the target rate for overnight loans for um, is financial institutions to make in between each other. Yeah? So mortgage loans are priced on the longer term. So that's why um, they're not directly related. Also, uh, one big thing I think is that, you know, the, the rates have been really low since January and February and the financial institutions, the lenders are getting bogged down just from that. So with that volume, they can't handle the capacity of more apps coming in. So what do they do? They just, you know, they raise the rates, just it's like supply and demand, right? So they, they can't they can't service everyone properly. And then, I mean, you also have the appraisal appraisers and everyone else trying to keep up with that too. So it's all like this big pipeline. 
So um, on the retail side, they're also um, adjusting the rates uh, that way. And then the third reason, which I'm, I'm the least familiar with, is the uh, prepayment risks, right? Because for the mortgage-backed securities, which are what's used to to fund these mortgage mortgages, um, they're a li little bit they're different from the from treasuries because they're they have prepayment risks, right? Because you know a lot of the time, majority of the times, um, these thirty-year mortgages don't go all the way to maturity, right? People refinance or people sell and they buy. And I think they, one of the statistics they say is uh, seven years is the average life of a, of a 30 year loan be before it's either refinanced or um, closed out because of a, a sell and a rebuy. So um, that's another reason why um, these 30 year or these retail Fannie Freddie loans aren't um, going down even though the Fed rates had such a drastic cut almost to, to zero, you know? Yeah, I mean, basically, most times they'll follow the Fed rate, but, you know, what you're talking about, the third week of March or second week of March, the Fed rate went down to almost zero, but the interest rate jumped up. And basically, it was kind of like number two there, like you're saying, like the support, the, there wasn't enough, there was too much demand yep. from customers trying to refinance, therefore the rate yep. bumped up. Is that, uh, and I'm not sure if you're familiar, but you see that on the commercial side too, or I don't know, maybe you guys don't look for financing as much as the res guys do. Yeah, the residential guys are a lot more like emotional, right? Right. But the commercial guys, um, everything's kind of frozen right now. And we'll kind of get into that. But yeah, the agency financing Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, HUD loans, they are required by law to lend even in these kinds of like really strange times um, it's just a small short period but if you want to you know get a loan now you're looking at like mid four or five percent uh where previously you know we we locked a rate on march 6 for a deal at 3.23 percent 15 year term 30 year amortization four years interest only just a, like that you couldn't have timed it better and yeah. it, oh, it nice. bumped up like a almost a full point there yeah because i locked in about a month ago for my fourplex and that was at four eight seven five i think uh, i was bummed but apparently um it gets underwritten with almost like a commercial from the standpoint of i mean i still get the 30-year amort but they tack on all these these uh, premiums because uh, it's more than a two 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 uh two unit or and um, you know it's an investor loan, so on top of the whatever, maybe it was like three point six, three point five for a owner occupant loan at that time. They tack on all these premiums, so yeah, like yeah. you know, owner non owner occupied at a quarter to half point, and then not a single family home or a duplex or quad at another quarter point. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yep, and that it, and now that we talk about financing, I mean that um, they they are they're dynamic, right? So they're also looking at uh, on the res side, uh, anyway, they're looking at um, they're underwriting real estate investments differently too, from the standpoint of um, they're already anticipating, you know, uh, non-payment from the tenants. So, say you had um, X amount of dollars coming in for for income from the your rentals, they're probably going to discount it more uh, from the standpoint of of you know that trying to cover your debt servicing because they're expecting you know a lot more. Unemployment, as as we've seen today from the uh, the stats that came in, yeah, on the national level. But so underwriting is changing um, as we speak too, yeah. So be wary of that as everyone is um, looking for for refinancing or or for money, cheap money, right? So how to get ahead of this? So try to get rid of, out of the negativity. I mean, amongst everything. I think to me, it's always mindset. We, and we always talk about mindset, right? And uh, I think I've mentioned in the past too, where I'm waking up in the morning and I try to come from a, a, a mindset of gratitude. You know, wake up, open my eyes, you know, happy to be alive, happy to, my kids are healthy. Um, you know, family is where we have a house under a roof to live on, food to eat. Um, you know, considering our current situation, uh, try to look at the positives, you know, um, I'm, I get to homeschool my kids right now, um, temporarily. So I'm, I'm appreciating that family time. 
and I actually revisited faith a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of things is online are online. So one of my my college friends, my college buddies, he became a pastor at a local church. So he let me know that their um, their mass mass um, ceremonies or their mass is online. So I tuned into that on uh, Sunday just to to um, get back, you know, retouch back into my faith. I was I was baptized Catholic, but I'm non practicing now. But anyway, the whole point is, you know, mind, body, and spirit, you know, and of course, you know, the whole pyramid of, of needs, you want to make sure your personal life is order, you and your family, um, be ready for self quarantine. If it comes down the line, because you never know, you know, I had one investor friend who went to South Korea, um, got stuck there because of the timing. Uh, finally was able to come back right after he got the plane, you know, CDC put a mask on him and they escorted him uh, on a daily basis for 14 days. They would randomly pop in on his house and say, you know, you can't leave the house. So he did pop in at any time. And so fortunately he had someone to help do shopping for him, but uh, yeah, be ready for, for uh, potentially being self quarantined. We've seen it. We're seeing it pop up so many places. Right. And um, check in with family members, you know, that you don't live with. I think that's, uh, really important families and friends. Um, I have my children call their great grandmother every other every few days, and to check up on her. You know, tell her a few jokes, see how she's doing, just to keep her in good spirit. And she's ninety ninety four years old, I think now. So, you know, they're alone. You know, a lot of the, the older older ones are alone and um, don't have you know family to to talk to at home so you know think about all those people your your friends and your family that may be in that situation and reach out um i'm trying to stay away from the news i don't know about you folks but um i'd listen to like fauci i listen to him um i li- i like to listen to him um on a daily basis i listen to see what the wahoo stats are in terms of if we're um, slowing down that curve but um, I, so that kind of stuff I listen to daily, but I try to keep the social media news um, from being on, you know, 24 seven. Hold on one second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't um, I try and see off social media too here. And what I've been telling my guys is protect your mind, protect your body, make sure you get some activity in, you work out. Um, and then, you know, most time it's so for some strange reason it seems like the algorithms for Facebook, Instagram, they kind of prioritize things that usually sort of bring you down. I've seen a study on that. Oh, interesting. So yeah. um, and then you got the kids there, right? That's I know that's uh every time I talk to one of my colleagues or partners, they always got the kids in the background. And it's a part of life, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And give your teachers <laughs> an extra nice present this year. I know, right? And and, and you know what? It, we it makes us appreciate educators too, because I think they're, you know, educators are 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 under they're not respected as much as they should. So, uh, props yeah. to your wife. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. So also, you know, find out your financial situation. You got to make sure you're healthy, right? So look at your balance sheet. Uh, look at your your cash flows. Make sure your reserves are set up. And when you say cash flows, I mean the typically that's like your job if you're a W two employee, right? Um, you know, try to see how that's going. I mean, some people, some you can't help it. You know, a lot of especially in Hawaii, we have a big tourist industry, so I know a lot of people are are hurting and things cannot be helped. But I also hear of um, being people being proactive and applying for. Um, other jobs that might not be in their wheelhouse, but they're trying. I'm hiring, man. Oh, if, okay. If people need a job, work from home, I'm hiring. Yep. It's the time to get after it. Yeah. Um, and then your businesses, right? And you're trying to bulletproof your businesses. Um, for for me on the real estate side, I've been reaching out to my property managers. I've been reaching, uh, haven't started, I uh, reached out to a few lenders, but I haven't reached out for my, to my lenders to ask, for um, for bands or or uh, to push back any payments yet, but I've been talking to my property managers uh, to see how um, collections for this coming month, right? April April second today. So now is the when the property manager are working hard to hopefully collect our 
our April rents, right? Um, looking at your liabilities, your mortgages, you're looking at, you know, can you refinance, tap into additional equity? Um, or maybe, you know, if you haven't done so, if you're at a high rate, uh, maybe you want to try to go back to get a low bit, lower rate. Uh, looking at your investment portfolio, whatever it may be, you know. I, I called my financial advisor too, just to talk story with them. And um, just and I pro they probably don't want me to say this, but I mean, because they're, you know, everyone's getting bombarded, all the service providers, right? Rather, whether it be a financial advisor, property manager, I don't know how you're seeing it in terms of the operators on the syndications. Um, hopefully, you know, your service provider is being proactive in reaching out um, to you or to their tenants or whoever it may be to, to be proactive with this process. One of my property managers, I think last month was being proactive for seeing this and reached out to tenants, sending them information on um, local resources where they could possibly get short-term funding, whether it be not-for-profits, churches, or, you know, some kind of relief for, for rent. So they were sending that out and letting them know, you know, they're still responsible for rent, but if, if not, then let them know. And, you know, it's important to have that communication. So I'm glad now is the time you're seeing um, your service providers that are shining. Yeah. So whether it be your financial advisor, property manager, operators, realtors, yeah, if they haven't reached out, then reach out to them. And um, I say be locked, loaded and ready, meaning, you know, get your cash reserves set up and you know, now is, is the chance. I mean, it depends on what side you're on, you know, on the, we saw, you've seen the big corrections on the, in the stock market. And you know, every day it goes after the big hit, the two hits, it's, it's been kind of going up, down, up, down a little bit. So the volatility is kind of interesting. And if so, I'm sure the day traders are absolutely loving it. Uh, I'm not a day trader, but um, it's kind of exciting. Um, 401ks, so are you W-2 employees? There's, there has been a lot of dynamic changes for 401k plans recently, whether it be from um, allowing you to make changes in terms of contributions to um, you know, being able to take uh, loans from it, things like that. So look, look into to that in terms of if you, know, if you need more cash flow, then maybe you can reduce that. Um, if you don't need it, maybe you want to increase it because now you can dollar cost average into your mutual, you know, into your funds at, at, um, discounted prices. I know Lane, you and I, we go back and forth about 401ks and, and the high fees and financial advisors and the fees, but for, um, you know, W2 employees who, who aren't doing anything else, they're not going to go into real estate uh, and the, counting on that as part of the retirement, then, you know, think about that you know um 2019 ira contribution was extended uh, with with the tax extensions so if you want to open up a um, ira for 2019 uh, you still can do it until i think what june so till summer so you know I'll all say, these things i'll say the opposite you, you, it, the cares act is allowing you to take 100 grand out of your 401k penalty free and i'll talk a little bit more about those in the, in the presentation, but right, right. You know, this is the the sign to get out of, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm being agnostic in terms of the real estate versus the stock market. So, yeah. I mean, we're you, you know, but, but yeah. The, so back to my point of being locked, loaded, and ready. If that's what you want to do, then like you said, now is a chance to take from it and and use it to be ready for, you know. Right. Yeah. Warren Buffett says the time to be greedy when is everybody is fearful and yep, there's blood yep. in the streets. Um, yep. I'm a, I'm an introvert, so I actually uh, don't mind this time. I don't have FOMO that I'm missing out on something on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like my random slide where I started like throwing stuff on, right? It's just more just to let everybody know, you know, we're going to get through this. Um, so all those, Families that have stocked up on 10 cases of Costco. I mean, that to me, that mindset, I don't know, you know, but I think people are, are, have, are anxious. Yeah. So we need to, like you said, Lane, you know, be of sound mind and, and come it from, from a different mindset. Um, tenants, you know, there are going to be tenants that are not going to be able to pay because of loss of job. I had, um, some tenants that I was just 
just last week we were just trying to um, get a lease extension and so from the week before my property manager was asking me about about them and, and so I said oh yeah I'm not thinking of increasing the the rates at all so just just request extension so the email came back from the tenants and they said oh you know considering this current situation uh, would the owner be willing to uh, reduce the rent rates for the for the next lease uh, renewal so at first I got kind of like taken aback but then I said oh you know what have the I had the property manager find out you know what's their situation so she went back and she was asking him, uh, so one of them was a nurse and another one was, I think, police. And this is on the mainland. Um, but what after she had inquired, they came back and said, oh, uh, you know, so disregard our request. Uh, we we're, will renew. And so I think there's people who are, are um, you know, people aren't thinking straight, you know, because, you know, even for, you know, if you're trying to get, get away with not, not to say getting away, but if you're not going to, if you can't pay rent, that's one thing. But if you're trying to get out from paying rent, then that's another, right? Same thing with, if you're not, if you're trying to get out from paying your mortgage, but you can, um, if you can, I think you should, because it's just gonna, you're gonna have to pay for it later. So same thing as a tenant, right? And if you need to, yes, ask, ask for relief. But if, if you're doing okay, then I would say just not because that, you know, that might just make the relationships poor um with your with the other half later on down the line you know um, so i also wanted to point out there's no such thing as over communication in my mind right like i said i'm reaching out to my clients to my my service providers and and talking story with them finding out um, how how things are going you know multiple states too so we're asking oh how's it in in this city how's it in this state and and seeing how everyone is handling it um, in their locality and again that's when you know the good service providers will shine, will shine out um, talk to your loved ones as i mentioned before talk to your clients um, to me reaching out and talking to people for me is more is a uh, cathartic you know it, it's kind of great to see how everyone's doing uh, making those connections that we can't do in person anymore i know elaine you had mentioned you're more of an introvert but for me, I, I like to get out there, so um, doing it through my kids and, and my yeah. family, but I'm yeah. also trying and, to... And that's the thing, right? It's not about you and me. It's about everybody else. And then I um, I mean, I'm trying to have as much calls as I can have with my investors because most people are shook up, right? Let's face it. Most yep. people yep. lost 30% of their stock market portfolio. Yep, yep, yep. That's, yeah, yeah. So... So, and with my portion with, uh, oh, I want to talk about that, the SBA loan I posted on the bottom. Yeah, a lot of my uh, counterparts, uh, friends, stuff are reaching out. Everyone's sharing information about the, if you go to sba.gov for you business owners, but it's not only for business owners, not for profits, homeowners and renters, you can apply. There's two different loans. Well, if you go to sba.gov, it'll tell you more about it. If not, you can reach out to me. We'll, we'll I can talk to you about that offline, but the federal government is part of that $10 billion uh, stimulus package that Trump passed. Yeah. So um, there's relief out there. So look, keep on looking out for you. And I wanted to end off my section with a quote from a Stanford economist, uh, Paul Romer. And he said, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. So, you know, when an emergency hits, there's actually opportunities that pop up, right? So resources become more available, right? Um, priorities become clear, right? We, we know what we need to do. Uh, rigid rules and regulations suddenly become pliable, right? I thought that only, you know, death and taxes were, were the only things that were guaranteed. But look, taxes got pushed back, you know? So things change, yeah? Uh, leaders pay attention and are accessible, right? We, we're seeing our president, we're seeing our mayor, our governor on the TV so often. They're being asked questions. So, um, you know, we're seeing leaders are, are pay attention to what their constituents need. And lastly, I want to say that, you know, change, even far-reaching change is possible. So it's so important to have that right mindset and to be locked, loaded, and ready with with our, you know, our liquid cash that we can invest, yeah? 
So that's that's what I wanted to say. Okay, we have, okay, and then we have my uh, kids. And uh, I'm sure if you guys if you guys clothes. are looking for some help, um, give Dean a call. I'm, I'm sure he's willing to chat with you guys because he's anytime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love like I said, I love talking talking story and um, trying to get that proper mindset that we should all be having. <laughs> So we should jump into your section so that I can uh, go on to mute. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, if you guys haven't checked out my podcast, it is a simple passive cash flow. We all talk about turnkey investing, whether that's single family homes or syndications. It's on you and check out the YouTube channel too. Um, and then we have Dean and I have arialoha.com, which is our local meetup group, which we're not meeting up now lately, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to take everybody through a little recap of what's happened this past month, um, just so we can really understand what the heck happened to us. So earlier in the month, probably the end of February, um, Dallin Jones was you know, having these huge decreases because of the COVID-19, but not a lot of people realized that it was also because of a uh, oil um, price war between the Saudis and Russia. So the COVID-19 crisis is sort of known as what we call a black swan event. You know, as we know, most swans are white, but once in a while out of a genetic um, anomaly, you'll have a black swan. So we basically got hit by two black swans. Right now, uh, oil, if you just look up the price of crude oil, it's trading in like the 20s or 30s. It's just like, it used to be in the 50s and, and you know, it's just, it's just not realistic for it to be in the 20s. And, and right now, what's happening, Russia and Sa the Saudis are trying to wage this price war against the older or the smaller oil and gas operators. Um, I actually went into one of those deals in December, but eh, not too bad. I mean, we still have the, uh, the equity there and the assets. So, um, you know, we didn't use debt on that deal. But um, the whole idea is to, they're trying to price everybody out and, um, you know, have the smaller operators in America hurt. And the frackers, right? Yeah, well, I like to call it stimulating the well. But yeah, if you <laughs> want to use the F word. <laughs> or the, the shale. The China, yeah. They, they're trying to get those guys to go broke. Right, right. So two big things happening. I think most of the news is on the COVID-19 coronavirus and I, I put this in here and for those of you guys, we're gonna blaze through this pretty quickly, but if you guys are on the YouTube channel, you guys can read all the articles and check out all the graphs and pictures. Um, but I put this in here, this was early in March 3rd, uh, CBRE um, released this sort of summary and you can see that the tone changed very quickly from, you know, in the beginning of March, there were uh, words used like, oh, the virus proves to be only seasonal impacts will lessen as weather warms, stronger growth in the second half of the year. Um, you know, sentiment like that was early in, earlier in the month. And then obviously in around mid March 15th, things started to tilt. So now the same reports from CBRE are, you know, more of a doom and gloom. And, um, you know, I, I don't think, I don't really see it more doom and gloom. I mean, I usually see things pretty, um, factual but it just shows how media and even these very uh, reputable news sources kind of um uh, they change their tone so quickly <laughs> i yeah, mean yeah. this is why i don't really trust them in the first place so this is one of the biggest days i was watching um 2000 points down in the dow um what do you think dean are you um are you like so every all the amateurs right they all say oh now's the time to buy right what's yeah. your thoughts um, a, I, I can't say I'm a pro, so I'm an amateur too. But um, what I, I have a feeling it's gonna go down again. Um, once more of the the reports come in from the you know the corporate quarterly reports start coming in. Um, but I, but honestly, I, I've been jumping in because now this is still a discount from the Dow when it was what twenty nine five. So, mm -hmm. but my understanding is that you know. If you're from the, I think it's a the technical standpoint, you're looking at price to earning ratios that are still, that still appear to be higher than what's quote unquote reasonable and, um, or healthy. So, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of waiting for that, that second correction um, because 
and and so what I've done is my 401k. I think I mentioned that I had put put it into cash in in January, and I just went back in couple, a few weeks ago when the Dow went back to. I think oh wow! Twenty one for you. Twenty one. I no, I I went I went in about fifteen percent. Oh, okay. So so I I'm because it's 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 four one k money. I only can put it in a few a few mutual funds. So and so and I can just you know allocate percentage wise. So I'm just um I'm I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. Yeah, you know me. I don't have any stocks. I don't believe in yeah. that stuff. I yeah. It's yeah, all. Yeah. I don't. I stopped believing in the Easter Bunny a long time ago, and believing yeah. in paper assets. But yeah. if I were to buy something, I'd buy like the Vanguard Energy Fund. I mean, mm. just crude can't be twenty, thirty dollars. That's just impractical. Not, That's, not realistic. Yeah. So I mean, to your point, like so many things are trading at a discount. That um, why why not buy? But I mean, it's all relative, right? <laughs> Yeah, easy come, easy go. I don't, I don't yeah. invest in anything where I don't have a clear advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, kind of following on this timeline, March sixteenth came around. This is at a point where things kind of tilted, where things were going bad for maybe a couple of weeks, and then the, the the Federal Reserve cut rates, and everybody thought that the uh, their interest rates would go down with the Fed rates, but in this strange instance which we we talked about earlier the 10-year treasury and, and the interest rates decoupled and um but this essentially what happens here is called quantitative easing um where the fed announced asset purchases of 500 billion in treasury securities and 200 billion mortgage backed securities and just to give some context and remember in De- december of 2007 um, the f- treasury was at 4.2 and December in 2009, not 19 before this COVID-19 was even a thought treasury was at 1.7 and then obviously it's now it's at zero. Well, that, um, that, that scares me. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've kind of used this analogy before, right? The, the, the fed rate is sort of like drop dry powder. When the economy is going well, you want to increase the rates so in, in troubling times, you can use that dry powder to stimulate the economy a little bit. But in my opinion, I was actually surprised when they cut rates on March 16th that they just blew their whole load. Right? And, and yeah, it was really weird because that's when they did on, on like a Sunday, right? They didn't even wait to, I think the, the next announcement was only like a week or a week and a half later and they, they decided to do it on a Sunday. So, right. and it was, it was so much. I thought they would have been maybe like, you know, 25 basis points. Yeah. Yeah. You normally it's 25 or 50 yeah. at the very most, but they just, yeah. I don't know. Maybe somebody dropped, I don't know, dropped it all. I don't know. I mean, yeah. well, what do we know? Right. We're, I'm just, yeah. we're just reporting yeah. the news here. <laughs> but yeah. But to your point, it's like, and that stat just now is, it's like, you will, we don't really have any, any dry powder for if and when, um, right markets do you know correct so, again so you knew you knew something was coming and, and we'll get to that here in a little bit <laughs> <laughs> um some some news for um everybody here the tax filing deadline got extended past april 15th uh feb, federal tax payment deadline moved to july 15th 2020 for all balances less than 1 million this means if you file you need still need to file or do an extension but you you got pushed back to july 15th but me and most of my investors, we always just file in October anyway. I mean, no sense to file early in April or even July, in my opinion. And um, it, it makes, you'll see some, I'll, I'll talk about some changes where you can go back to some previous tax returns based on some CARES Act um, relief put in for um, rich real estate investors, which is always nice. And that's why you always wait for the last second. Of- and just as important as the, or for the state, I mean, I mean, for the tax returns, the, the Fed, but it's important that uh, your state tax return was extended also because if not, it, you need to do your federal tax return to get your state tax return. So if your state is, wasn't extended, which I believe they all have been, you, you wouldn't, um, your, your tax preparer wouldn't have any relief because <laughs> they would yeah. still have to do, prepare your federal tax return before to submit your state. But I believe all the states have also extended. So like, like you said, we're Hawaii is July 20th. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and this is a good time to remind everybody that we are not giving tax, legal, or professional yes. advice out here. We are just giving you ideas to go to your professionals and um, you know, go read this stuff for yourself at the irs.gov uh, website. Um, don't, there's always one guy who like says, oh, you, know, you guys said there's no taxes due and you, they don't extend. And I'm like, well, you, know, you didn't think for yourself, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so as we continue along in the second half of the month, Federal Reserve you know, cut the rates to zero. And the idea of the CARES Act, um, or this what we call the stimulus plan, a lot of names out there that people are using. Um, and at this point, a lot of the blue states, like especially like California, were putting halts on evictions. And this is why I always say, you know, I don't know why you would want to be a landlord in a blue state where this is going to happen. So it was, this was happening. And, you know, going back to how you're dealing with your, your tenants, um, you know, the, the way we, it, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a case by case basis, but what I've been telling my investors who have rentals in blue states is maybe you don't say anything, you don't draw attention to it, or maybe you, 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 you hit it up up front because people in California, a lot of those tenants have that idea I'm just being really general here that they're entitled to not having to pay rent where what's nice about our tenants in our red states is they don't get all these, you know, self-righteous ideas. You know, they don't have yeah, all well, these crazy ideas. And, and then like, like, like how we mentioned, I think it comes down to um, people acting irrationally because if you think about it, if you're a tenant that can pay rent and just doesn't want to, uh, and you don't because of if there's a law that or a loophole that allows you not to, because my, my understanding is if you can't pay, then you, you, that's, that's one thing, but if you can pay, that's another. So um, keeping in mind that if, you know, if that's the case, you could potentially just, uh, you know, or assuming you like the place that you live in, you may ruin your relations with your landlord, your property manager who, or whomever, because, you know, after all is said and done, then, and, and then they're now allowed to, uh, you know, after this passes and you can, they can kick you out, then, you know, they, they marry very well may kick you out. And so, I mean, you get, people need to think in terms of the, the, the long, the long run and not just think, okay, today. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I understand there are people that are in financial crisis and financial burden, but, um, like, how I, my example is that people are thinking irrationally because short term that may be nice, but um, if they can pay, I would say, yeah, they should, because, you know, they may get kicked out when they're, when being kicked out is allowed, you know? Right. So, and right. I, and you can't really, as a property management, you can't really communicate that to people, but I think just through time, People will realize, you know, as the tenants are talking, oh, what if, what if we, um, you know, we can pay, but what if we, we don't pay? And, um, and then, well, what, what's going to happen next month or the month after that? And then, you know, it, it kind of comes, they, they'll be talked off, off of the, off the ledge eventually. And again, this is not to say um, the people that are truly having financial burden. That's why for those people just communicate to your landlords so, so that, um, you know, the communication is there and something can, can be, um, um, negotiated because you know our owners owners we 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 have mortgages and bills association fees to pay too so everyone we're all in this together so that's why communicating with, with is the best um, alternative in my mind yeah and that's why these conversations are good even though they're you know we're kind of all over the place a little bit but you know like that's why you know you kind of join a community of other like-minded investors that are kind of doing the same thing so you have these kind of con conversations because every situation is different so, so here are some other headlines well not really headlines but things that happened the last couple of weeks that kind of kind of got brought to my attention so marriott and then started to furlough two-thirds of their domestic uh force cheesecake factory you know those guys they notified their landlords that they will not be making their month their their month's payment this month their rent uh, Gap, Macy's, Kohl's announced separately that they're planning to re furlough a majority of employees. So we're starting to see the layoffs for sure happen. And then on about the end, this past week, 
the coronavirus relief package, the $2 trillion stimulus plan got created. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll be breaking that down for sure. But I'm in another uh, mastermind um, with probably the top two of every MSA out there in the United States. You know, these guys flip over 100 houses a year. We have um, calls every week. And here are some of the activities that they are doing because these guys are right at the forefront. These are frontline soldiers. Um, maybe not the things that you and I would do, um, especially passive investors, but just to give some insight of what these guys are thinking. Um, they're thinking fill vacancies as soon as possible, even though you have to reduce rents five to 10, 15%. Call your property manager and ask them to do what they can do just to get butts in seats or, or heads in beds. Um, lock people up on month-to-month -month leases or be flexible, go to six, nine, or 12-month leases. Um, you know, I wouldn't really suggest this for the average person, but these guys are getting their credit cards and prepaying their vendors out of it and just hoarding cash. Cash is oxygen to get you through this situation. Um, and mind you, these guys are the guys who, sending, who are sending you landlords, um, those annoying postcards and yellow letters to have you sell your house. And these guys add budget. They, they usually spend anywhere from $5,000 to $25,000 a month. So they're cutting that. and But they're keeping their TV ad and pay-per-click, their online ads, because most of us are uh, stuck at home watching TV or scrolling on social media. Yeah, and they that makes are, sense. They're firing people, um, unneeded people, and decreasing their overhead. And I think that's something we can all emulate. Yeah. You have a captive audience now on social media. Yeah. Yep. Um, other things that they're doing is they're getting their HELOCs in cash now. So I call that monetizing your HELOC um, because you never know. That's the bad thing about these HELOCs. Things get sideways and the banks pull those HELOCs. And you don't have access to that anymore. If you take that money, you, you monetize it, put it in your bank account. They can't really touch it. Um, get quotes to refinance any properties and uh, requote your insurance rate to help lower your expenses. Um, if anybody needs a couple of referrals, I actually have three insurance guys I refer out to. Um, if you guys are looking to requote that, let me know. I'll shoot you over to them. And um, should be prepared. At this point, I mean, I have 3,000 units. At this point, we are using the wait and see model right now. Like we said, we don't want to show our tenants that we are going to be overly forgiving on this. And we think that it's a big deal. We, we, we take this very serious and we know it's a big deal, but we do not want to communicate that this is a big deal to our tenants. Uh, as far as they're concerned, the way from our outlook is like it's business as normal. Your rents, dude. Uh, we're gonna be going into a whole bunch of small business and parts of the stimulus package. And I'm gonna be having a, a webinar where I get my lawyer. We're gonna go through these things um, April 15th. So if you guys are interested in that, um, shoot me an email and I can introduce you to that. But I also have a, a living guide to all this stuff at simplepassivecashflow.com slash COVID-19. Um, but this first SBA um, benefit is, you know, if you apply, if you're a gig economy, work in a gig economy, 1099 worker, independent contractor, you work for hire, self-employed, you're eligible for a payroll protection loan as long as your business doesn't have less than 500 employees. And um, you know, in our, in our mastermind, they were kind of telling us, look, every single LLC you got, you should be applying for a loan. Um, I'm actually going to, after I get done with this call, I'm going to actually sit down and try and do mine. Um, I, I might have my lawyer do it. I just might pay him. Um, because I don't like doing that stuff and I'm lazy doing that, the paperwork, stuff like that. So I might have him do it. And, you know, he's willing to kind of do the same if you guys are looking for a referral from that. T take a look at it though, Lane. I, I did, uh, my understanding is there's two SBA loans. One is online and another is you need to go through the bank, uh, through a bank, I'm sorry. But um, when they first rolled out that first, that 10,000 forgivable loan, it was uh, very, uh, complex and it was a little bit of a pain in the butt but then the 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 sba.gov that site crashed and they came back and they redid it so when yeah. i went they to redid the it, form right on monday yeah, yeah. And, and it yeah and it's a lot more is i think it's like two two pages and they don't ask up front for you to submit anything 
uh, in, in terms of supporting documentation. So yeah, it, it might be just two pages. Take a look at it, I would suggest, and go through it yourself. It's relatively simple. The other one though, the payroll one, the or there's another one that's above and beyond 10K. And that one, my understanding is you need to go through a a bank, almost like, you know, like how you go through a, getting a normal business loan. So that one might be a little bit more challenging. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, if you guys need help, ping me too. Uh, we, we can, I can help walk you through it that, that first one though the other one yeah uh, yeah the, yeah so the purpose of this stuff is to get the money in people's hands and get have them spend it yeah. and the, but the catch is you can't uh you can't fire anybody but the good news is it's not all or nothing you know if you got somebody on your team who's dead weight you know you get rid of them and, and supposedly they can kind of pro rate it as things yeah. goes along yeah i think um, you need to be in business during this time too right if you're shutting down i i I mean, I don't know if they're going to allow that. It right. doesn't make sense, right? Right. But as far as I'm concerned, the way I read it, I mean, if you got a heartbeat, you've been impacted by this COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, and they've been trying to roll this thing out so quickly and it's so dynamic. To your point, Lane, I, I'm not too sure how, you know, there, there's some yeah, inconsistencies in terms of the administration. There's no way they're going to regulate this. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. So uh, to your point, yeah, I, I would, if, if you're unsure if you qualify or are eligible, apply because, um, you know, the worst case is they'll say no or, or maybe they give you the funds and say, no, you need to pay it back. But I mean, if anything, I think they would yeah. say no first. So yeah, the worst case is they'll say no in, in theory. It, it's a, it's actually should be like a tricky way of doing the 2020 census. If you got a heartbeat... <laughs> I would I would consider applying. <laughs> don't just wait, don't just wait on your twelve hundred dollar check. That's for everybody else. You're gonna get that too. That's but Garen's right. You, you gotta get you gotta put your name in the hat for the ten grand grant. Um, action plan. So at our properties now we're on the more on the institutional side. You know I've got three thousand units. We don't have the time to you know calling talk and start with each individual tenant or each property manager. Um, so here are the things that we're doing. We are sending out obviously letters to um, our tenants saying that, yeah, we're cleaning things, making things sanitized, and we're telling them to stay at home per guidance of CDC and government agencies just to stay in line there. We uh, still are addressing work orders, but we're, we are conserving cash at this point. We, um, we are trying to do more of the safety related and emergency work orders at this time. Uh, we're cutting back on our property management staff where possible and we're still showing properties and um, but we're trying to direct people to do the more websites and then just having do self guided tours where we require ID just so they don't screw up the property. And of course, like I said earlier, we're kindly reinforcing that the rent is still due. Um, are, are you, do you have section eight? Yeah, yeah. Are you finding that some of the Section 8, um, they're not doing uh, inspections or, or things like that? Have you, like, I know that's the case for um, a few jurisdictions that I'm invested in, that's why. Probably. I mean, like every, everything in like in terms of that's deemed non-essential, right? So, yep. I mean, I'll talk about it later on, but like, you know, if you have to get some LLCs because you're doing a deal, get it done now, right? Because all that stuff can be cut off. All those... You know, my mastermind, there's a whole bunch of wholesalers and flippers. They are freaking out because they can't, the courthouse is not working on their deal right now. Um, so I pulled this Wallet Hub article in here and has a list of the most over leveraged cities and under leveraged cities just to see um, who's the most in danger here. And on the most over leveraged cities, that's the ones that you don't want to be there are good old Eva Beach, Hawaii, and Kaluhi. <laughs> and actually I have a like an auto email for um distressed properties to hit send to me. And yeah, now that you mention it, I do see a bunch of um distressed property sales uh listings popping up in that Eva Beach area. Hmm. So yeah, interesting. So some tips uh being a landlord, you know, listen to the story, ask for information, request. Um, an offer for the tenant, you know, don't be the first person to say, oh, we'll cut your rent by 10%. You know, I heard that recently. I was like, that is not good negotiation skills, buddy. <laughs> you know, you want to hear them out and you want to say, hey, what do you think is fair? And sometimes maybe they might um, say something that's 
you know, less than you're willing to go. Um, communicate, and we're taking the stance of trust but verify. If, they, if they're saying that they lost their job, I want to see pay stubs to verify this. And um, luckily, last week, I was actually a little worried um, last weekend, not going to lie, that uh, my tenants weren't going to pay rent and we were, we're all going to die. <laughs> but um, I guess the Fed, the, after the CARES Act released all the stimulus, the government agencies, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, released guidance on forbearance. So that's what's nice about getting these agency financing as opposed to all these portfolio loans where you're the... Um, you're subject to the bank's uh, rules. So the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac um, forbearance options are, you know, they're, they're willing to halt um, forbearance for 90 days, but the catch is you can't evict anybody. So it's, it sounds good, but you know, a lot can happen in 30 days. You can effectively turn your property into a non-paying class D property pretty quickly. So that's the other downside to that. And then, so the, what, how my understanding, or I'm not sure, but I, I heard that the way that um, if you don't pay it, like for those three months, they just tack on those three payments to the back end of your mortgage. Is that is that something yeah, you heard too? Yeah, yeah, you're not. It's a forbearance. Is they just tack it on at the end? So yeah. it's just a putting pause on on life, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So those of you who are individual landlords and you want to be very proactive, something that um, we are not, we're kind of taking the wait and see. Um, here is a sample letter that you can possibly send out to your tenants or something of the sort to communicate um, your standpoint and reminding people that their rent is due. Um, other things that I've heard people doing is they are offering like a $20 gift card for people to pay early, you know, because the thought if people are running out of money, they don't have much more than a thousand bucks of cash reserves. So if we can get the rent out of them 15 days early before the Netflix subscription comes in, et cetera, you know, that's, we can possibly, you know, collect rent where we otherwise wouldn't. But the problem is when are you, when is that optimal point that you're just wasting money on gift cards? We don't know. That's why we, we, we are personally not doing that figuring out your ROI. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so other ch changes going into the future, are I'm personally staying away from class C deals because these are the, the most uh, vulnerable part of the population, especially in this case, because these are the guys who are the first to get cut. These are the hourly workers and a lot of them are in service related jobs, non-essential and uh, especially smaller deals. You know, I, I've, I'm done with anything less than a hundred units because um, you just don't have the scale. Um, when we underwrite, we are using a 4% interest rate on our commercial loans. Um, I would use a 5% interest rate on single family homes. And, uh, you know, we're only using two years of interest only um, on our underwriting. Um, that said, you know, we were, we we're being conservative in that nature. Like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we got 3.23% 15 year term on a 30 year amortization and four years of interest only phenomenal loan, but we just want to be more conservative. Another way we're doing that is increasing our assumed economic vacancy just to add a little bit more cushion into the model. Being more conservative in your, your forecasts. Right, right. And this is you know going into the future, you know, yeah. next next quarter, next year. Um, is that for future deals or current just your updating? Future your, deal. Yeah, future yeah, yeah. deals. Yeah. 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 Passive Smart investors, investors, some potential action plans that I've been talking with my um, passive investor accelerated mastermind is number one evaluate your job status. Do you work for the government? Do you, um, you know, are you going to get laid off? What's happening? Um, I would be really uh, uncomfortable being in a uh, $200,000, $300,000 oil executive right now. I mean, especially with the, with all the oil crisis that's happening. Um, once you figure that out and you've kind of figured out how secure your, your current cash flow situation is, um, number two is to cut costs. You know, this is 2008, 2009, all over again. I don't think it's that bad. Um, and, um, you know, it's try and what you try to do what you can do to redo insurance quotes, save costs, you know, don't spend money on things you can't, um, you don't need. Monetize those lines of credit, those HELOCs. And um, if you guys are interested in geeking out on what happened with the interest rates and 
the Fed rates decoupling, go to www.mortgagenewsdaily.com. They had a great podcast in early March um, explaining just that. Uh, so I did a, a survey with my investor group, um, most of which are accredited investors. So keep that in mind. And um, I was a little sad because the the minority of the investors who are the non-accredited guys, you know, the guys under a million dollars net worth, man, Dean, those guys are dropping like flies. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's, you know, it's, that's like even me in our, you know, twenties, right? Like they are hurting right now. They are scared. They are dipping into their savings and they are like, they don't want to invest right now. But they were the, living, they're basically they're living paycheck to paycheck, banking on their future cash flows from their, their their jobs right right and they just don't have the net worth right they don't have the available cash to as i call it have an opportunity fund to ready to get after it which the accredited investors like 80 percent of them are like licking their chops right now the way they see it it this is a true black swan event there was nothing wrong with the economy before this all happened i don't know if this is going to be a, like how they say like a v correction where you come right back out of it or more of a nike swish but I am definitely bullish in um, second half of this year and the beginning of next. Right. And then the different markets are going to be affected differently, right? Like you said, the V may very well be more potential for the, the stock market versus the, you know, the real estate is, side is, is, has a little bit of a lag and the reaction time may be slower and not as, not as deep potentially depending right. on where you invest. Yeah. Right. And, and it's so strange because this is unprecedented because such an industries are completely out of business. Some are still in like, you know, construction is deemed essential and that's, mm -hmm. that's going like gangbusters right now. And I'm guessing Amazon must be doing really well from, I mean, people who may have never purchased on Amazon may be looking there now. Right. And creating accounts and yeah, joining prime to get the video. So, I mean, you, you opened up, like you said, unprecedented where some people, maybe, I don't know if it's like the older folks who, who never even did Amazon might, might be even, you know, reaching out and trying, trying to buy products, but like, yeah, in, it, very interesting times. And it's a whole opportunity, right. For yeah. those who, to, who view it that way. Yeah. I mean, look at like zoom, right. I mean, it, it's like that kind of company is they're blowing up. Um, I was trying to buy, uh, you know, those Peloton bikes. Yeah. 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 I, I went, there's another competitor that's a lot cheaper that I think is just as good. So I went with them, um, the echelon, but their bikes are sold out for the entire month. I had to put mine's on order. What about that, <laughs> that other one that, um, mirror or something? I saw you're looking at that too. Oh yeah. I got that one too. <laughs> you, do you got it? Yeah, because if you get both of them, you, you use the same monthly subscription for both. So it's kind of about oh, cost they're, savings. They're affiliated. Yeah, they're affiliated. So I, I like that one better. The, the mirror, mirror? Yeah, it looks more appealing to me than because there's seems to be like you could do a lot more types of activities versus just being on a bike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wanted like the yoga and my wife can use it. And um, yeah. Are you affiliate affiliate rep for that? No, no, they, I, I don't think they do any of that kind of stuff, but you're welcome to come and work out, you know, cool, maybe, cool, not, yeah. maybe not the yoga, you know, <laughs> yeah, okay. I heard you can go on YouTube and do it at home yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, and I think, you know, again, this is where the negativity comes in. Like, I think most people, especially amateurs, they're all trying to like predict the next recession or, you know, this is the end of days. Uh, and, and the appeal to that is like, you know, it's, it's kind of cool when you predict predict it right you're kind of the guy but the trouble is a lot of these guys you, you call them parent bears they, they predicted 12 of the last two recessions right mm. yeah i mean if you don't jump back in after you you call it and you prep for it then what good is it right <laughs> yeah. i mean we had we had a, a lunch a couple weeks ago with um I'm a partners had um, a lunch with this uh kind of old school developer and he said, like, dude, this is like Jimmy Carter years again. This is like, a, like he sees it as a complete black swan, too. And he said, this is where I made a ton of money. This is where I made legacy wealth right here. This is the time. Everyone should be excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, form uh, energy sooner than later in case the government closes offices or deem those type of things non-essential. And, um, you know, be on the lookout for rent control. Um, economic outlook moving forward. 
Um, again, like, you know, the government did $2 trillion. Oil trade cannot sustain $20 to $30 a barrel. And remember that the economy was doing very well before this whole coronavirus and oil trade issue came about. Um, might be opportunity to find deals. Um, people are trying to make sense of like what's happening with the real estate. Um, on the on the right side here, I have a picture of four chairs and four people. I call this the great musical chair game. And I luckily found the picture with four chairs because they sort of represent A, B, C, D class housing. The um, Basically what's going to happen here soon, if people will potentially lose their jobs and they're going to be displaced. They're going to have, the A's are going to move the B's, B's are going to move the C's for the most part. And for a time, there's going to be sort of what's depicted here. Everything's going to be up in the air and there's not going to be butts and seats or heads and beds and landlords aren't going to be paid, which I feel like is temporary, which is why adequate cash reserves is necessary to kind of wait this out. Write it out. Yeah. Yeah. Here is a list of some of other notable black swan events, you know, one-time events that just happened out of nowhere. Nobody could have predicted it. And then the, uh, the decline in the SCP, how many months, and then the, how we came right out of it. And some of these are like the Russian crisis, Y2K, 9-11 terrorist attacks. Um, they, they said the, the guys who came up with this are ITR. It's a report that I subscribe to. Um, it's a paid subscription. Um, I would recommend it to anybody who's listening, who's looking to, you know, cut through all the garbage out there in terms of the media. Um, these guys said that the 9-11 terrorist attacks are pretty similar. Um, not, not in terms of like the trigger or what it was, but in terms of what they believe, how we'll come out of it. Um, aren't you glad you didn't invest in hotels or, you know, this is why I don't like short-term rentals. Yeah. All the, that stuff is gone right now. Um, I put this little graphic together to depict what exactly happens um, in a demise of the economy as um, a viewpoint from a real estate investor. So first here, the black swan event, which is the coronavirus, then the fear sets in, stock market retracts 10, 20%, and that has already happened. Business income decreases, that has already happened. Companies start to cut jobs, now that is starting to happen. And what we don't know in this first week of April while we're doing this uh, webinar is can tenants pay rent? Now, why did we, we, remember we invested in workforce housing in the beginning because housing is the last thing to stop paying and this country had a housing shortage to begin with. But many people live paycheck to paycheck. Um, we are kind of at this stage right now. We don't know if this is going to happen. And once that happens or if it happens, then we need to see market vacancies go up um, decrease market rents. And this happens over a period of months of this type of environment. Then lower operating income, which, which will then impact the higher cap rates, which um, is what drives commercial real estate. Now, as far as your world, Dean, the residential properties, have you seen any kind of softness in pricing or is, what's, what's going on there? Um, well, on the wholesale side, you're seeing um, more things pop up um i guess that's from you know pe people can't buy things cash anymore right um so um, the deals that i've been seeing and that's get, getting forward me from my partners is, is that um yeah because people are either wanting to hold on to their cash or not you know getting gun shy they're, they're holding off because you know the deals might get even better later um on the retail side, um, volume has definitely slowed down in terms of, well, you know, as a realtor, we we're, we can't have open houses any, anymore. Um, and so my understanding is we're, we're still essential, um, but, you know, we can't, there's a lot of things we cannot do. And it, it some things are deemed, you know, if, if you're in escrow already, then maybe you can um, have activities to close it up, but you know, we're still trying to keep everyone safe. So with that said, um, volume in terms of, um, people showings and people looking at, at potential listings are, are, it is slowing down, but you still have people who need to sell and people who need to buy. But yeah, I think we're, we're and I didn't talk about any stats for Honolulu this month because the March stuff, March data won't come out till uh, in four days. 
Uh, and it's yeah. all a mood point, even this next one, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Like you said, I mean, I think it's going to be the 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 one. It's going to be like you know May, April, and May's data that comes out that and and um, to see w what's happening. And by that time, we already know, right? Based on on our volume and the amount of um, people reaching out to us, potential yeah. buyers and sellers. So that's right, exciting uh, times. It's a falling knife. Yeah, yeah, no, but like you said too, it's a, it's an opportunity, right? So right, right. I mean, a couple of deals came back to us, um, not for any reason that like another another buyer couldn't perform, but we're in the situation where like if we go in with a good offer, um, you know, we want we don't lowball people. We don't do that in commercial real estate. It's just silly. Um, but if you go in with a little bit of a discount, and you go in strong. You know, pe most people are wanting to sell these days. Most sophisticated owners. Um, so other, here's some good news, some tailwinds, you know, you should um, be looking into the unemployment benefits and what we've been doing, actually, some of our property managers have been sharing the links, basically spoon feeding their tenants, how to get their unemployment benefits. I'm giving them the, the state and local um, URLs to file for that. Um, it's tax time for, you know, most people file their taxes in April and a lot of our tenants should be getting a uh, tax refund. So hopefully they have that money to pay us rent. Uh, red states are not restricting evictions at this time. And uh, future government uh, programs, as we said. And um, here's a little breakdown of the CARES Act. So Again, we're not giving any financial advice. I have my lawyer giving a webinar on April 15th. Let me know if you would like to join us on that um, to break it down. But here are some of my interpretations on it. First, $100,000 you can take out from your retirement account, penalty-free. And I think you have like three or six years to pay back the, um, uh, you know, it comes, it shows up as active income and um, you have to pay the taxes on that. But um, great opportunity if you've been looking to uh, get out of your uh, your equities and get into hard assets uh, number two here uh cash checks are coming out the uh, the graph on the right side uh shows you how much you're supposed to get uh dean you marry file jointly with two depends you got a check for thirty five hundred dollars coming um i hope <laughs> Yeah, I believe unless, you when I unless your wife had a really good year this year <laughs> <laughs> Is there's a quick phase out between one hundred fifty thousand dollars and two hundred thousand um, dollars adjusted gross income? That's um, based on eighteen, then. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Because yeah, because the nineteens aren't finished yet. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I should. My AGI is nothing, so I should be at something for sure. But not in eighteen, though. Um, in eighteen, eighteen. I think it was less. I don't know. I don't really, you know, I, you know, this is why I'm going to pay my lawyer just to do, um, right. just to do the paperwork. Cause I, I have a, I feel bad about doing it, you know, doing all those kind of the free handouts. That's why I don't have like, I'm not motivated to do it. You know, even, I just rather just pay someone to do it for me. Leave know. it to the specialists. I'm conflicted ethically. <laughs> <laughs> um, FMA is giving uh, additional leave there. So if your employer gave you an extra week to stay at home, well, it's not because of them. It's because the government gave it to them in the CARES Act. SBA loans, we talked about that. Credits for uh, retailing employees. And... Um, this is a cool one, qualified improvement property. So those of you guys with passive losses from your rental properties or syndication, there is a change with the 100% bonus depreciation for costs associated with the interior improvement of non-residential property by changing the tax life from 39 years all the way down to 15 years, made retroactive for improvements after September 27, 2017. So you can go back a couple of tax returns and refile. Uh, any comments on that one, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just was thinking the implications. So you're gonna have a lot of um, amended tax returns back to 18. Yeah, sounds like you know, you know what? You're, here's what here's the, the things I see. I think a lot of like CPAs are rolling their eyes right now, and they're like, "What a bunch of work!" <laughs> I really hope my client doesn't have a clue what this is, so I can just be another lazy CPA and not do it. No, I mean it's I mean fee for service, right? You, service providers, you. you they get paid. So. It depends, right? Some some CPAs they just pay on the refiling fee. They're smart uh, if they do it per hour. Not everybody does it per hour. 
Or this, yeah, this like you said, amendment. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like this one, I, I wasn't a CPA. I was more of an engineer, right? And you know, when your boss gives you something super complicated to do at the end of the workday, yeah. this is like one of those that just makes me cringe. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you're doing tax depreciation, it's it's already a pain in the butt. So, I mean, I think once they get it down pat, then you know it's systematized like anything, and then. So hopefully their uh their their tax software will be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, but there's a little bit of a a judgment call, right? The CPA mm-hmm. needs to use a little bit of like brain power and strategy. Mm-hmm. Like, are they going to take this all the way back to certain years? Does it make you sense? Want, for you want to take it? it up front? I mean, it's it's all about just you know you're taking advantage of upfront versus spread out, right? That's all you're doing. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would say most CPAs would just kind of be quiet. <laughs> kind of like me, my my last year of work, right? You know, you don't say much. You want to create more work for yourself. But maybe that's probably why you shouldn't have a day job like that. Because anyway. yeah, you know, if you open your mouth, they're just gonna say, "Okay, they give oh, you the work, right?" Good, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so just to recap, you know, this is a breakdown of the two trillion dollars. Um, I'm not going to read it. You guys can read it on your own. But the New York Times came in with this article. Bonanza for rich real estate investors tucked into a stimulus plan. I would, I would, I would agree with this. I mean, yeah, it was. It, I think everybody needs to help out. And um, yeah, everybody's hurting. But there were definitely a lot of things put into there for real estate investors and the wealthy. So definitely. But they call them bar- bipartisan. Oh, to, in order to get it both sides to pass right quickly, they they all have to take right, um, take right. hits. Here, here, here's my analogy. It's like you know when you take your kids to, uh, well, you don't take them to Toys R Us because it's not there anymore. Right? <laughs> but you tell your son, oh, I'm gonna buy you the Nintendo Switch. Okay. So you take them, and that sucker goes and throws in all these games in the car, gum, candy. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Um, so this is a kind of negligible, but they added in a $300 above the line dedu- deduction for charitable donation. That's nice. Um, let's get some of these. So this is a chart from CoStar, a data house. Um, they have a, they pretty much all the data. They own apartments.com. They're the big conglomerate behind them. But they put together this chart on absorption vacancy. And this is what I like what these guys do is they put together different scenarios. And this is their forecast of severe downside or the heavy doom and gloom. So they see us, they see vacancy going from currently like 6.5% and going up to quickly up to eight, as high as 8% um, later on in the year. And then that should taper down after. So, you know, they're, they're acknowledging that there's a recession. Uh, Green Street Advisors is saying senior housing, student housing are ones getting absolutely killed in the real estate sector. Um, but, you know, other good notes, as we mentioned, less meetings. We can, we've, uh, hopefully we've proven after this month or two that we can do things virtually. Um, more family time, less sports. There's no, nothing to watch in ESPN other than you watch you guys play around the toilet paper at home. Um, more time to exercise. Um, this COVID-19 economic survival guy is what I put together. You guys can get it at simplepassivecashflow.com slash COVID-19. Um, that's a living guide. Um, I have a book club if you guys are, you know, Folks like Dean, that you need some social interaction. Um, <laughs> check that out, simplepassivecashflow.com slash lane hack. Uh, I'm reading the Go Giver book. Um, oh, so I read this. I guess maybe it came from this book, but I, I just decided to give everybody my e course for free for the month. I was like, screw it. I mean, it's like I usually sell it for like $900, but I just, because this book just says give, give stuff away. So, how do they sign up for it? Um, they can go, they need a coupon code. Oh, okay. And the coupon code is Kokua and it will turn it into free. So uh, you uh, probably have to spell Kokua for the, our non, uh, Hawaii. Yeah. People. Yeah. No, I had to, um, 
Google it too. It's I think it's K O K U A. You can access it at. <laughs> you had to Google it. I did. I don't know how how to spell it. Yeah, you said it's Kahului too for the the Maui. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sim- well, I didn't spell that. That was came from the article. Oh really? They oh, sent I- it wrong. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, where's that at? <laughs> Some on the big island or something? <laughs> but yeah, so simplepassivecashflow.com slash e-course is how to get that for free. And that's only for this month because I'm trying to be a go-giver. It was a little hard. I did sign. I see over 100 people sign up. And wow, I could have bought a lot of Peloton bikes for you, <laughs> you me, and the family. Yeah. And... um. I don't know. I mean, I think, I just think like you and I are especially are very fortunate that we don't have to worry about like getting fired from our day jobs because we don't have day jobs. Right. right. And um, I think a lot of people out there are hurting and we're all in this kind of like situation together where it's a big like traffic jam, right? Like it sucks. And I think a little bit of compassion for everybody is definitely needed in any way you can. Yep. Very good. Very well put. Yeah. We're not going to watch your kids though, Dean. (laughs) <laughs> that we're gonna have to charge you for that. Oh man! And uh, let me let me check your other half though. Maybe she'll think. Yeah, different. I don't know. I don't think she'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we had we were going to do a May a live seminar for folks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the URL is reialoha dot com slash rei one hundred one dash twenty twenty, but this has been postponed. So. Um, we will let you guys know when we plan to do that. We'll probably just wait a, a month or two before we have yeah. this. Yeah, looking forward to that though. So hopefully, you stay tuned, yeah, everyone. Yeah, um, simplepassivecashflow.com dot com slash join team. Um, I'm hiring. I know Dean, you're looking for people to help, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Always support to, admin support. Right. And um, here are a bunch of articles. Um, if you guys have any questions, type them into the question answer box. I know we went a little long today, but I mean, this is exciting. We actually have news now, Dean. I know. <laughs> Le- legitimate stuff. <laughs> I know. Um, this is all on our YouTube channel. And um, you know, here's our legal disclaimer. But um, hey, I wanted to ask you. I, I'm thinking that they're going... I don't know how long this COVID-19 crisis will, will occur. I know there's a lot of, I'm sure people talk about it and it sort of gets political sometimes for some people, mm-hmm. you know, what, what policy should be taken. But I mean, I think if this thing goes longer, I think there's going to be a stimulus to package coming out. That, that really makes good. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it, yeah, that, that, that sounds very reasonable especially when you're when you brought politics into it <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know if it's going to be like another two two trillion or what but it sounds unsustainable or I mean, and, and here's where i'm going with this i base people get up really upset when the government creates fake money like how they're doing and the way that it works despite what your economics teacher tells you is the the way to get rid of, rid of the debt is just to inflate the money supply. Then our debt is worth less. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So like, you know, your parents bought a house 30 years ago for what, 50 grand? Yeah. That 50 grand is nothing today, right? That's essentially what we're, you know, we have a $2 trillion bill we just added to our balance sheet. Well, hopefully in 10, 20, 30 years, that $2 trillion be nothing. And it's not unprecedented too, you know, you got to look at, there's other, I think Japan, there's other countries that are, are, have been doing the exact same thing. So, right. And, and I think I'll I'll make a bet with you, Dean. I think that this, I think there's a a good chance, like a maybe a 50, 50 chance that we're, we're going to see negative interest rates this year. Ooh, wow. That's an interesting one. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent sure if Trump gets a second term, which I think he will. I think we're going to see negative interest rates in the next four years after this. Ah, okay. So yes, what people need to realize is like you put money in the bank, the bank charges you to hold it there. So it's a total situation where gravity is reversed. So you, everything you've, heard you've been taught. First. Yeah, you've heard it here first, uh, listeners. Lane 
Nostradamus Kaoka has predicted the negative uh, interest rates. Uh, what what a appropriate uh, background you have there. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get away from all everybody and do my part and flatten the curve, man. Uh, I, I I like it a lot. I like that. I don't That's know. Nice. What do you What do you think? I mean, is that? It's not on her. I I didn't think of it. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking that it might possibly go negative, but I uh, bring up a legitimate point. I, 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 I'd, 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 it's very interesting, good point, and I'd, I, I'd put a bet on it just for fun, for lunch when we can yeah. eat in person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. Yeah, cool, cool. But, and it's not like the end of the world. You just have to play it the right way. You yeah, just have to strategies buy change. Yeah, you just have to buy assets and don't keep your money in the bank because savers are losers. Right, right. Yeah. And then, so it should be interesting how what happens to the, you know, the ones that, you know, cash is king, which was always the case, yeah? Yeah, I mean, yeah. works for some people. I don't do that. Me neither. Um, yeah, anything else uh, you want to share with folks? Any, anything you're going to get done this next month or yeah. you're calling for or you're watching? Oh, I just, you know, just a message for everyone to, you know, come with the right mindset of gratitude. And like you said, Lane, compassion, uh, communication is, is important. And, you know, if you have free times on your, on, on your hand, use it to, to better yourself, you know, learn a new skill, read a new book, uh, uh invest, exercise, um, but do something, you know, we have, for sure, we have one month ahead of us that we're, we're stuck at home. So, use it to your advantage and so that at the end of this month you're ahead in some way and you've bettered yourself uh, in, in, in at least one way I think would be my my message to everyone stay positive yeah and, and if you guys um, want to reach out uh, my email is lane at simple com, or if you want to book a call um, and we haven't chatted before go to a simple com slash contact I think yeah slash contact all right. Oh, we got a last one. Okay. okay. Bob says, awesome. You go, Dean. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. See you next okay. month. See Bye. you guys. Bye. Free Real Estate Investing Group. Check out reialoha.com. Just two local guys with so much to say So listen to the Real Estate Brothers today